this is Scott Allen Miller. Today on Sam IT, we're going to talk about how VPNs might be dangerous. Now, you've heard about VPNs, you probably use them, they've been around for decades. And VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network, which basically means that it takes a virtual network connection and gives it the rough security that you would expect from a leased line. That is where the term originally came from, that it was virtually private. Today, VPN technology has actually improved pretty well, and we can roughly assume that it's actually more secure than a leased line. In fact, lease lines aren't that secure, so the original bar was set kind of low, but VPNs uh, are actually, when set up well, a pretty secure tunneling mechanism. They provide a manner of packaging data moving from one location to another in a highly secure way. This much is true, and this is why VPNs are popular and useful. The problem with VPNs starts with the fact that we have a tendency to believe that because VPNs are a security technology, that the use of them therefore increases our security. We do universally understand that using a VPN does not magically make us secure, but we do generally tend to associate it with becoming more secure. And that is kind of true if we're replacing something that was doing the same thing in a less secure way. The problem is that's not where VPNs get used almost ever. Typically, now a great example of where they do get used well, often people use the RDP protocol with something like an RDS server or just lots of RDP connections. RDP isn't the most secure thing in the world and people have a tendency to put VPNs in front of RDP servers specifically to handle a lacking security mechanism in that item. That's a great use of VPN. It's unfortunate that you have to use it in that way. It's not incredibly elegant, but it's a place where given what you have, this tends to work pretty well, so good enough. Okay, so there are good uses of VPN. We're not saying that there isn't. But what's important here, what I want to discuss, is that VPNs have a tendency to encourage really insecure things, and that's where they become a problem. That insecure thing that VPNs tend to encourage is land-based security thinking. In 2016, I gave a talk at MangoCon uh, in Rochester, New York, called The Brave New Landless Future, in which I talked about why land security or land-based security is dangerous and legacy, why it exists and why it's okay that we've had it in the past, and how we are looking at the future and how we approach things today. VPNs arose to prominence during the era of land-based security. Essentially, we see the world as being our network and we trust things that are on our network. And when things are not on our network, we don't trust them. The purpose of a VPN, almost across the board, is to take our network, our LAN, probably our main corporate network, and extend it to other locations, whether it's a point-to-point -point VPN where we're connecting our office with a branch office, or it's an end-user-to-hub uh, uh, VPN where our end users are connecting maybe from home or a laptop on the road into our office. But in whatever case, the purpose of a VPN is to create and extend the LAN because it takes all of the things that attach to it wherever they are and treat them as if they are LAN resources. Now, of course, you can do things with your VPN, such as drop it into a DMZ and treat all traffic coming in from that VPN as if it was outside your network. Great, that's good thinking. That's how you should be approaching your, your VPN because things that are on the VPN are unknowns. You may think you know what they are because they've attached to your VPN, but that's kind of like saying you trust anything that plugs into your wall socket because they managed to get into your office, therefore they must be your friends and not, an, not a danger. And that's obviously not how it works. Now, most people are not hacking into your VPN. That's not what they're doing. More likely, you are going to have endpoints, such as an end-user laptop that's in a hotel, that may have been compromised because it's off your network, it's not well secured, you, you don't have complete control over it, maybe it has malware, whatever, that can then attack your network through the VPN. Now, of course, you may say, but I have lots of security inside my network. Okay, great. But the problem is, is that the purpose of a VPN is to extend your LAN. If you had full LANless security, why would you want the VPN? It's unnecessary. You can replicate all of the advantages of a VPN without the cumbersome nature of a VPN in better ways for free. Not that VPNs aren't free, but they're cumbersome and they're confusing for end users. So if you really had the security that makes a VPN acceptable, you wouldn't want a VPN in all but the rarest of cases. RDP, for example. But 
in the real world, the nature of wanting a VPN, the nature of a VPN extension of your LAN having a utility that you want to leverage also means that it's a, a danger to you because it's only useful because of the exposure that you need in order for things to work. It's a little bit confusing, but it's mostly a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? The nature of wanting a VPN is the nature of being insecure if you have a VPN. So e yes, there are cases where the VPN can be handled well, and there are cases, and often we don't refer to it as a VPN in these cases, where we may want to use VPNs for something other than extending our LAN, such as giving us a single address space, but this is often called software-defined networking. It may use VPNs to do its job, but we don't refer to it as a VPN because we're not using it in an assumed VPN manner. I don't like that terminology because it's confusing when you actually learn how things work, and it's hard for people to figure out exactly how things will interact when we rename common things as something else. They start to think it must do something different when it doesn't. Uh, but products such as Zero Tier or Portino are actually just VPNs that aren't intended to be used as you would traditionally use a VPN. They're more extensions of your IP space rather than extending your LAN security. They're the exception, not the rule. And if you're using your VPN manually to do something of that similar nature, great. You understand VPNs, you're in, you're in good shape. But if you're using a VPN because you need to take your LAN and extend it out to others, that's where we start running into problems because those others are now people you're trusting as if they're part of your LAN. That means, one, you have a security concern that you're trusting someone who's actually a lower tier of security as if they're at your top tier of security. And two, you're using access to your network as a definition of some security accessibility, and ideally that's not something you want to do. Getting onto your network should be something you don't worry about. If someone walks into your office, plugs into the wall, and gets access to your core switch, yeah, of course, kick them out if you can. But if you don't catch them, you shouldn't be worried that they've gotten access to your core switching infrastructure because that should not be a means of bypassing security. Your security should assume that everything on your network is still hostile. Just like in the real world, we assume everyone outside our front door is hostile. That's why we lock the front door, that's why we watch out the window, that's why we put alarms on our houses. But it doesn't mean that everyone outside is hostile or that we want to uh, treat them as if they're hostile when we go outside or ignore them and treat like it's okay to be hostile. If someone who's actually hostile gets caught outside your house, you still call the police. You still do something about it. But we never treat our house as if the world outside is not hostile and we don't want to do the same with our network either. Your network should assume that the world outside is hostile and take proper security measures so that that's not a problem, but that doesn't mean that you don't kick people out once you've caught them being hostile. It's layered security, you put them together. I hope that this helps explain why VPNs themselves technically are not a danger, they're simply a connection tool, they're just a technology, use them when appropriate. But the assumed use cases of VPNs, the reasons that the majority of people use them and the assumptions made about them are generally incorrect and are a result of land-based security thinking, which was not necessarily appropriate, but required in any way in the 1990s and previously, simply because of the nature of the times and the way the technology worked and what reasonable threats were at the time. And that VPNs have, like other things, morphed over time and the world has changed around them and the number of times that we want to be using them compared to the past has changed dramatically. That doesn't mean that you can magically stop using a VPN and all is okay. To get away from existing VPNs, you probably need to completely rethink how your IT infrastructure works. You need to move to a landless design, so it's not a trivial move where most companies can simply stop using their VPNs because 20 years has passed. It doesn't work that way. You need to rethink how your applications work, how you interact with users on the outside, how you interact with users on the inside, what your namespaces are like, how your network will communicate, and what your security will be. You can't just remove your land-based thinking, you have to replace it with other types of security. Remember to like and subscribe. Remember you can sponsor us on Patreon. I'm going to be doing another 
a video on why VPNs are specifically dangerous for consulting companies because that comes up so much. And uh, please put your questions below, put your comments, and I will do my best to link us to uh, A Brave New Landless Future. I think that that video, well, it's, it's relatively long, it's over an hour, uh, is well worth watching because it really conveys a lot of what I'm trying to get across here uh, about why land-based security is legacy and where we need to move on from here.